over the last decade and maybe a little more years ahead of that the fundamental thing that has been happening in the IT industry is that consolidation has been the major talk in town. So why is this happening? The fundamental reason is new servers that we buy or hardware that we buy have much more power in terms of CPU memory than the older hardware that you had. <clears throat> this was basically what the Moore's law states, the amount of resources you get in the newer servers are more. A quick look at how Moore's law has been running through the last few decades. This is an example from Wikipedia. You can look up for Moore's law. And from 1970 all the way till 2020, there has been a depiction about how many transistors are there to do processing. And you look at that, it has been increasing for each processor how many transistors are available but if you look at specifically the last couple of years of how this has evolved if you look at it at 50,000 transistors it was somewhere around 2016-17 but by 2020 we have made it five times what was a 10 times to be more precise from 10 10 million or it's 10,000 million is the value here to 50,000 million transistors has evolved in a very few years and not only is it about the CPU the memory storage and other capabilities that are available within the computer have also increased in terms of how you can use them and that is the fundamental reason why consolidation has been happening traditionally before the talk of consolidation was happening it was by default the way to use any computer was as a bare metal wherein when you install any software that software needed resources and a given computer server couldn't give sufficient resources that was the case till about a decade ago but then with more transistors available, more memory available, there was a lot of capacity in each server which had to be used or utilized properly and thereby virtualization came into play. So let's first look at how we used computers in the traditional manner, maybe typically a desktop or a laptop today, we still use it the same way. We buy a hardware, we install an operating system and then we set up whatever software we want in them and generally we had separate separate servers to keep each application a simple example could be you had a separate server where you had your web server running a separate server where you had your application server running and a database running so when you want to have a entire architecture based structure to be implemented you typically used these components web server was in a separate server the app or the application was in a separate server and the database was in a separate server because each of them needed cpu memory which was limited in terms of what one computer could provide but with moore's law coming in there was sufficient resources in one server itself but then the idea about keeping all of them within the same server is possible but maybe some challenges were there could i have them run on the same os maybe the database required a particular patch the web logic needed to run on a particular setup or the application server wanted to run on a particular server and it resulted in challenges in keeping the different different software running on the same server and more importantly how could i prioritize and give certain amount of resources so that they do not eat away the entire resources was a challenge and as a result of that virtualization was born with virtualization what we could now do is set up the hypervisor on the computer and create virtual machines in each one of them such that each virtual machine has its own independent os 
the computer where these virtual machines are created provide the CPU, memory or RAM and networking resources to the virtual machines and the storage was provisioned in a shared storage environment such that various servers could access such network storage and couple of benefits we have with this is even in case one of your computers fail you could move the VM which is running on that into another hardware because the storage was shared and accessible across all. Thus, we were able to give an independent operating system for each application that is running, maybe the application web, the uh, web server, the database server, independent OS. At the same time, we were not constrained by putting them on the same OS and as a result we could use the hardware effectively on the new servers that came in and this resulted in a lot many more features that came up apart from better utilization as a result of better utilization we could save space in the data centers buy lesser number of servers save on cooling real estate power etc at the data center and with virtualization various other benefits came in the ability to provide high availability within it easy deployments with templates or images ability to clone and create a new virtual machine from what is available and the ability to run legacy applications within them also so the industry has been moving further ahead but fundamentally this is the reason why we have had the idea about virtualization coming in and the latest idea that is happening is to set up your applications as containers which is in the form of docker based setup which is a another layer of optimization on top of virtualization another reason for this happening is i don't need to bother about the infrastructure let me keep my application highly available in a set of hardware as such that is a quick look at the evolution of the hardware industry as such which is being used and we will relate to this when we come into the container database architecture later on.